Those of you who are taking thesis seminar wanted to talk about how to present your figures and your tables in your final thesis paper. This is in the classroom. My name is Benjamin Stewart at benjaminlstewart.org. Wanted to show you by way of example uh, how to include your figures and your tables. So one thing I want to mention right off the bat is that we're going to eliminate a few pages here that uh, we previously had in our template. If you go to your template just below tables of content, in fact, I think I already removed them. We had a separate table that said list of figures and another one list of tables. Go ahead and remove those pages and after the table of contents. I don't think it's going to be necessary to include those, so go ahead and remove those. Now, in your results and discussion section, and perhaps in your methods section, some of you have included a table. Basically, if you have a table like this, we're going to insert those as follows. I have the example already here, but I'll do it again. If you go to Insert, Table, and include one cell, then you can call it Table 1. And you're going to list these tables by number in order in the way that you presented them in your paper. So if you're going to present your first table in your method section, that'll be table number one and so on. So here we're going to list table number one. Then I would go down one line and then insert another table within a table. So let's say you've got a, you want a three by three table. Okay, so you'll include your table as follows. All right, and then go back and select each of your four lines in your outer border here, and then go in here and just simply select the white color, and then that should eliminate your, your border. Okay, that's basically it for, for your table. So you've got your table here. I would keep it as a normal text, as the style, and not worry about bring it in, bring it in, bringing it into the table of contents or any other list. Just leave it uh, as is. That'll be fine. Now, if you have a table like this, a figure, where anything else that's not a table is going to be a figure. So it could be an image, could be a picture. It could be a graph, a table, not, I'm sorry, not a table, a chart. And so if you have a table or chart that you want to bring into your document, you can go into Insert, and you can select the chart. And what that does is it automatically creates a table or a file that is linked to this. So if you open up the source, you'll go into your own Google Drive, and you'll see the spreadsheet where this information is being generated. So from here, then you can select, oops, try this again. And you can call this figure one. Okay, figure one, then go back to your document. Wait a second here, go back. Then you should get here in a few seconds. You should get an update button. I'm not sure how long this takes. I haven't figured out exactly how long or how to... There it is. You'll get this updated uh, button. If it doesn't appear right away, just give it a moment. And uh, now you see that you have your figure. Okay, so this is how you can uh, generate a heading. And uh, you can call this figure one. Sometimes you'll see examples of having it uh, labeled as figure one, figure two, and also some sort of title. I don't think it's necessary to include a title. If, if you want, I guess you can, but do, do make sure that you have listed them in order, figure one, figure two. If it's a table, table one, table two. Now, the last thing you can do here is insert an image, and uh, you can go to insert image and upload either a file from your computer, or you can search on the web, or you can bring it in from your own Google Drive, perhaps even Google Photos. You can also do it by URL. Now, this I have not figured out an easy way to <clears throat> create a, a title 
for this. So you might need to just insert a an image. Let's pull up an example here. And I think for now, uh, I would just insert, do a text, a wrap text, and bring it down just a little bit. Yeah, I haven't really figured out a really good way to do this. I'm not sure how many of you are going to be using images, um, but we might uh, look at this here. Let's see, a break text. Again, I'm just kind of playing, <laughs> playing around with this. Um, if anyone has a really good, easy way of, ah, uh, you know what? I just uh, realized. Scratch that. Let's back up. I think there is an easy way to do it, and it's by going into drawing. So let's try that. So we go into drawing, and we're going to create a text. So we're going to call this figure, figure two. Bring in our borders here as, so, as such, and then we're going to insert an image. So we want to search it again. We're going to look for a tree. And from here, we can kind of get our title a little bit closer, get it like that, and then save and close. And voila, we, now we have it. So this is the way I, I would do an image. Again, they're going to be figures, images, and, and graphs, and charts, and, t and um, charts, and um, graphs, pie charts. These are all going to be called figures, and then we'll have tables, will be tables, and uh, basically that's it. So go ahead and remove the, ta the, the pages that I originally included in the template. We're not going to need that. Don't worry about that. But do include your table of contents. Everything that I'm talking about here, the figures and tables, are not going to affect your table of contents. So don't worry about that. Make sure that your table of contents has Times New Roman. So you may have to go and select all of the text once you've generated your table of contents and go in and select Times New Roman font size 12 just to make sure that the fonts are correct. Make sure that if you're editing your text as you or after having... Uh, generated your table of contents, you'll need to go back and update that so that uh, all of the page numbers are correct and all of the titles and headings are correct. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions about figures and tables, feel free to leave a question in your Google Docs or see me, and or we can talk about it in our tutoring session. This has been In the Classroom. My name is Benjamin Stewart at BenjaminLStewart.org, making teaching and learning more transparent.